Hey guys, today we are going to talk about my top seven favorite combos and I'm going to give you a little bit of magic history. So I've been playing magic for a long time and each of these combos I have a history with. Dark Depths was a card that very, very inexpensive at the time. No one knew what to do with it. I would, you would have to pay 30 mana to get your 2020 flying indestructible avatar which unfortunately doesn't have trample. It can be blocked with a Birds of Paradise. And on the flip side, it also didn't have haste. So this was not a card that many people felt was very good. Along came Vampire Hex Mage. The week before Vampire Hex Mage was spoiled, the Dark Depths went up in price. It went from 50 cents to $10 to $15 to $20. And this continued on Back in that era with the, that was original Zendikar, I believe, for Vampire Hex Maids, even up to New Phyrexia, there were things called the God Books. And what is a God Book? A God Book would be a, similar to what you find in a fat pack, it would be every single card given to a magazine or an in-print magazine, so they would need to know about the cards early so they could write their articles. But these God Books got out to pro magic players. One of the Guillaumes, if not both of the Guillaumes, were banned from magic for not, not looking at the godbook, but disclosing they had it. So it's kind of like a crime, right? Their crime was not that, because other players and many other pros had access to these cards well before they were printed, similar to some people today when they spoiled the EDH dragon deck when they spoiled an entire set, yeah, Ixlan was spoiled even before Hour of Devastation came out, was spoiled. So that is the story for Dark Depths. Now, going to Suko and Illusionist, the Illusionist was always kind of a met card to me, and Suko with the equipment, the Equip Zero. I guarantee you they will stop doing Equip Zero because the ability for abuse so the combo here is very easy. You equip and you maybe have another creature and then you equip to another creature and then you equip back. So whenever this card is target of a spell ability, you mill free cards of your library. So you're milling your library, which is normally very good because you might play some type of dreads build or you might have the little jelly fist that comes back in play with dreaded return. And this was a fun little, it wasn't very competitive, but I played it because I felt it was really fun. And in Betrayers of Kamigawa, that was not a particularly strong set. So when this card released, people were like, oh, okay, this is one of the better cards in the set to have, you know, in terms of long-term value. The set was not what it is today because of EDH. A lot of legendary creatures, but they weren't really like that great. All right, so let's talk about Draco. Draco was from Plane Shift. What is this? This is like Tenth Edition that got reprinted in, and Erratic Explosion, which this one is some type of plane chase, but I believe it was in Standard, so it probably was in Plane Shift as well. Someone correct me if that is not right. But anyway, this was a combo in Standard when I played it. You had the Draco, and then you would stack your Draco on top of your deck, and then you would blow everything up. Draco was actually a relatively strong card back in the day. Uh, they had, what do they call this mechanic? Tribal now? It's called a tribal mechanic where you need each of the basic lands. Like tribal flames is, oh, it's called domain. That's what they call it. I was thinking of tribal flames. Tribal flames used to be one of the strongest cards in standard. And this theme was very good. I mean, you ran your tribal flames, you ran your Draco, you ran your explosion and it just felt pretty epic like it felt really fun to pull off it was like that one friend i had who wanted to play coalition victory and coalition victory is really kind of difficult to pull, pull off but once in a if we had enough players we did, we were not playing ed8s at the time but we were playing multiplayer which is very similar and he always tried to pull off the coalition victory which was easily preventable uh, we played a lot of land destruction, a lot of creature destruction, and getting that many permanents on a field is just really tough. But this combo, it just feels so good to do it. 
well worth like the investment. Uh, here's another combo that is semi-competitive, I would say, and at one time dominated. Uh, Illusors of Grandor and Donate. Uh, this was, I'm pretty sure, extended. This was I played it in extended, which is like Legacy Light. It was kind of like Modern Light, actually. Now, it's really hard to explain extended. It was like cards rotated out, but they couldn't rotate out too far in the past because that was Legacy. And then they just got rid of it. So extended was kind of like modern before modern came along. This is one of the most creative combos. Um, the donate effect was a lot of fun. It was so fun. Um, and this is what I think we're lacking in Magic today is the creativity. When donate came out, it just opened up a ton of things you can do. And illusions of grandeur, which then became delusions of mediocrity and the Urza Legacy, I believe. So you could play that in standard. It was not as strong, obviously, as this combo. But nonetheless, it was a fun combo to pull off. So Donate was a really fun card. I, I always love the Donate combos because it, it operates in kind of a unique space where some cards hurt you. Like Sleeper Agent from Urza Saga. Always an interesting card. Always a fun card to play with. I like the fact that you're giving something to your opponent that they might try to get rid of and you're gaining advantage or your opponent is losing resources because of it. Donate, one of the classics. All right, talking about classics, let's go all the way to old school. Kismet, status, and time elemental. The way that this would work is Kismet um, is one-sided and this is very important. So all your creatures, lands, and artifacts come into play tapped. So your lands and artifacts and creatures are okay, but your opponents are always going to be tapped down. Status would be players do not get an untapped phase. Pay one during upkeep or status is destroyed. Time elemental is two and a blue. For an O2, you don't even need to read the first part. The first part is not that great because you're not going to use it. Two and double blue, return target permanent with no enchantment on it to owner's hand. So you would be returning the status. So what you would do is you would have this combination of cards. You would return the status back into your hand at the end of your opponent's upkeep or the end of your opponent's turn. And during your upkeep, you get to untap everything. But your opponent, it's a very fun kind of, this is control to me, is you set up these pieces and then you just stabilize and then you eventually win the game. So you keep untapping, which is great, and your opponent can't untap anything, which is also great. And whenever your opponent, it's not like your opponent can play a land and then, you know, use, like, that's how you would get around status, right? If you played a land and come and play untapped, Kismet puts everything tapped. So they have really no options. All right, next, uh, this is a classic I do remember it very well. Uh, I didn't use the Shield Spirito. There was a bunch of other creatures you can use, like the Orincopter, the O2 for zero or flying, the Fraction Walker, which is the O3 for zero. So anything that doesn't cost mana to play. A creature that does co not cost mana. There's plenty of them. Uh, so Goblin, Barbarment is one in a red. Sacrifice creature, there's one damage target creature or player. Enduring Renewal means you play with your hand revealed, and if you draw a card, reveal the top card. That's not relevant. Uh, whenever a creature is put into your graveyard from play, return it into your hand. That is extremely, extremely good. That's like incredible, right? So what you do is you sack it, deal one damage, it would come back to your hand, play it, deal one more damage, and comes back to your hand. And this is like kind of one of the classic ones. I remember... People were very like upset that in Time Spiral this card was coming back, but it didn't have the combo pieces. Like it needs the combo pieces. It's not that strong by itself. I think they did have a combo piece. I'm thinking of what it was. It was like a Cantor. It was some type of red green card where it sacrificed itself to generate one green or red mana and you play. Yeah, okay, it's that. We did actually have a standard combo. I remember playing it because I was like, oh, I'm going to play it. It wasn't like that good. I don't know why it wasn't that good, but it generated infinite creature loops. 
like this one. All right, and lastly, one of my favorite combos. I always like Azula, Lost But Seeking. I think that's a very, very strong card, and you don't really see... That's a very unique ability to have on a creature. I know that there is another card that is a little bit better than that, uh, Fast Bond, but mm, I like this one a little bit better. Crucible is good. Walk the Eons is so good with this. So what happens is you get all three of these cards out, you walk the Eons, you take an extra turn, and you sacrifice three islands, but during your next turn, you can play an island from your graveyard and then two more islands from your graveyard. Then to walk the Eons again with the buyback back. So buyback means it just pops back in your hand. So obviously you do this an infinite amount of times and now you have all the advantages you need. You know, every turn you're you're getting so much. I mean, the great part is you could, if your opponent doesn't have any creatures, the best way to win the game is just mass in for with the one, with the one two. 20 turns later, you, you won the game. I mean, not the most efficient way, but I think that's kind of the most amusing way, at least in EDAs. Anyway, that is it. Let me know if you guys think of any other combos that should that would have made your top seven list. These are mine. I know that we have different opinions, but I like them and I am connected with each of them in its their own ways. Anyway, bye guys.